Yes Show, episode number 156. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is James Cork. Hello, everybody. It's good to be back in the normal uh, episodes of the show and not reviewing something. <laughs> uh, it's good, man. But I feel like we're going to review something. Like it, it, that, that feeling of reviewing is there. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, there is some reviewing in the air. I am not sure about that. Hmm. What's in the it's sky? Like, what, what's in the sky? What, what's that? What is that? I don't know. Is it a bird? Is it a, bird? <laughs> is it a plane? <laughs> is, is it a plane? No. It's, oh, it's a no. reviewer. It's oh my book god! Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I apologize for what was in the uh, air today. It's, uh, well, I had Mexican for breakfast. Oh! Look at that! It's Battlefield Earth coming <laughs> from the sky! I can't believe it! <laughs> hey, so wow. How are you doing, man? I'm doing well. How about you guys? Uh, could be better, but hey, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining, but I'm okay. Cool, cool, cool. And also joining us today, guest host for this week's episode is Kikas King. Hey guys, thanks for having me back again. No problem, man, no problem. So, King, how have you been, man? Uh, I've, I've been I've been alright, to be fair. Uh, something interesting happened, which I, I need to give out a quick shout-out to Darkened Link, who decided to add me on DeviantArt. Thank you for that, man. I uh, appreciate it. Um, how have you all been? Oh, that's an interesting one. James, why did you go first? On what? How was your week? Oh, do you want me to talk about my week? My week was very boring. Really? Uh, if I yeah, if I say that the most ex- the most exciting thing that happened to me was that uh, I went to watch Kingsman on Monday. That's definitely the most exciting thing that has happened to me all week. Everything, anything else, just as usual, working on commissions, getting more movies laid updates out of the door, and. Planning things out for the future. Also working on Bronnie Scott's uh, uh, Facebook and Twitter banners. Oh, cool! And Kingsman, how do you enjoy it? Uh, it was a it was a very good movie. Uh, that uh, when I when I left the theater, I wasn't feeling all that much uh, for it. But it's one of those movies that the more I think about it, the more I actually realize how much I enjoyed it. Would you say it was mind blowing? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I swear that last sequence oh God. was <laughs> one of the it was one of the happiest genocides I have ever seen in my life. It was so cheerful. It was very artistic. They, they kill yeah, they kill a lot of people, but hey, they kind of had it coming because who 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 joins with with Ooh. that megal- megalomaniac? The, uh, that was that was good. By the oh. way, kind of spoilers, but mm-hmm. it was it was a very good, oh, good true, very good true. sequence. Oh, by the way, um, you remember the professor in the very beginning? Yeah, that was Luke Skywalker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't recognize him. I know. Oh, yeah, it took me it took me a moment to see to see. Hang on a minute, is that is that the Joker? Is that Mark Hamill? <laughs> Holy cow! It is Mark Hamill. Oh god, uh, I I read facts about that show, like um, Samuel L. Jackson's character. Who was it? Valentine something. Uh, Valentine. Yeah, in the comic, he didn't have lips. Lips. Lips? Is that lisp? Like? He didn't yeah. Ha- yeah, he didn't he have did. a lisp. Yeah. He didn't have ellipsis. <laughs> no. <laughs> ellipsis. I don't know. No, Elis- that's that's ellipsis. That's a Squall Leonhardt from Final <laughs> Fantasy VIII. He's the master of the ellipsis. Yep. Yeah, but in the movie, he he uh, Samuel Jackson did the lips, and it was pretty fun. Uh, but enough about that movie. Silver, how was your week? Oh, my week's been just fine. Uh, Mostly I've been hunched over getting graphics ready for my Equestria Girls review, which oh. uh, re- just getting the voiceover for that was a bit of a challenge yesterday. Every time I started reading, my upstairs neighbor would turn on their t- their uh, tub so you hear the hiss of all the water. And I'd stop, and I'd wait, and they'd stop, and I'd start again. And then they'd turn the water back on, and I'd stop, and I'd wait, and they'd turn the water back on. And I just thought, okay, you're doing this on purpose. <laughs> You well, know, all you would need is some booze, and it's uh, a lot of people's opinion on the Equestria Girls franchise. Your neighbors, your neighbors, pipes, water pipes. They didn't agree with that movie. They were all like, "Shh, shh, <laughs> I thought the fates are conspiring against me. Well, to be to be fair, Norman knows how I feel about that that movie franchise. Mm-hmm. Uh, that movie was awesome for you. <laughs> it's what brought me into the fandom. So yeah, it was. <laughs> Uh, mm. I I consider the first one a guilty pleasure. I am not sure what to think about the second one. Still, I, love the second I watched one. it. 
I I watched the I watched the second one once, and I don't think I want to watch it again. I don't mind watching it again. In a state of depression, I watched the show, and it cheered me up a bit. <laughs> one word, <laughs> catchy. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, well, the, the 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 pop song, yes. The movie, I will say, reviewing this thing, it hasn't brought on the energy that <laughs> an episode usually does. Oh uh, yeah, true. You know the. There's not there's not a lot of excitement now. I have a I have a higher opinion of Rainbow Rocks, but I feel I owe it to people to review the first one first. <laughs> Good word <laughs> choice. True. Let's go by the numbers on this one. <laughs> uh, let's see, King. Did you mention how was your week? It was alright. Um, got a little busy. I uh, got a commission or two. That was good. Um, that was it. Um, I spent what was started out as a doodle has turned out into nearly a two, three week picture. And then I did it, I did it again. I was like, oh, I'll do a little doodle to take a break. Wait, I like where this is going. Oh no, this is another three week project. <laughs> so I spent about six months, uh, six months? Wow. Uh, six weeks on two or three pictures, just trying to get them perfect. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, well, as my week goes, pretty boring really. Woke up, did nothing much, work. And then, magic, rinse, repeat. I guess I'm in that zone where I'm boring. <laughs> in Norman, you have zone. always been boring. Oh. <laughs> oh but anyway. I can be boring too. I can just talk in this monotone. No, you don't. This no. will be the longest podcast of your lives. Oh, no. <laughs> that record. Now, is, your MVS. monotone sounds awesome, so now, it's fine. On the, on the MVS show. Hamlet, as played by the Elcor. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, but anyway, let's move on to uh, what's on the list. And next on the list is housekeeping. And our good friend at Everfree Northwest has a message for us. Uh, King, you mind reading this for us? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, the, Ever- the Everfree Northwest Convention, known for having one of, if not the, strongest writing tracks in the MLP fandom is back with another great writing contest. This year's EFNW writing contest had over 75 entries, and with a combined total of 30,000 views in their first month, we're pretty proud of. Uh, we gave away some great prizes too. This time we're back, and we're better than ever. Ready to pit authors against one another in friendly contest to see who can best portray friendship via the written word. We're looking for writers who want to have fun and enjoy writing awesome prizes. More information will be found in the show notes. Cool, cool. Last year, our good friend Kitsu got second place. So, yay! So, to all you fic writers out there who are interested in, you know, just giving this a shot, go ahead, try. Informations are in the show notes. So, King, the next one? Uh, and also, we got an announcement from Lee Toker. Toker? Toker. Toker. Ah, it's a mouthful. Uh, greetings, you fabulous fillies and gentle coats. Please put your hooves together for Lee Tucker, who makes his return to Everfree Northwest. To us pony people, Lee is certainly best known for having for his roles as the mischievous Snips and the sorrowful sea serpent, Stephen McMagnet. Did you also know he was Spot the Diamond Dog? Mm. The Diamond Dog named Spot, I'll have to look that one up. <laughs> In addition to Friendship is Magic, Lee has lent his voice to several of DHX's other series, such as Littlest Pet Shop and George of the Jungle, the, la- the latter earning him the 2008 Electronic Animation Award for Best Male Voice Artist. Anime fans remember him for his numerous roles in Death Note, Inuyasha, and Monster Rancher. Just to name a few, Lee's talents are hardly limited to just the voice booth. Lee is also an extraordinary illustrator and painter whose fantastical works have provoked the the imagination in strange, beautiful ways. So everybody, please give a warm welcome back to one of the only, the one and the only, the simple, marvellous Lee Tucker. Tucker. It's one of those words I can't seem to pronounce. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) want Want to come to Seattle... Uh, to join in the fun, uh, be sure to register now. Uh, qualify for our pre-reg badge price and book your hotel room now with at our special rate before they're sold out. Remember, the convention is May 29th to 23rd, only about three months away. 
Uh, make sure to check out the website notes at the link in the show notes. Cool, cool. So yeah, Lee is coming to Everything of West, and that's awesome. So uh, Lee is how do I put this? A strange and wonderful guy. Mm-hmm. So if he you... was also the he was also the head of the uh, of the fan community fan build. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He was that uh, was yeah was dedicated to gather fan voice actors and fan animators and fan writers to make their own projects. I don't know what ended up happening with that uh, idea, but if it's still around, it is definitely worth checking out. True that, true that. It is still around, if I do remember right. And yeah, I mean, just go on and uh, check it out. Like, links are in the show notes. And if you're interested in going to Everfree Northwest, here's something for you to, what you call this? Look forward to. So, yay. So, anywho, uh, with that over, let's go into discussions. And since we have no guests, like usual, uh, I feel depressed. (laughs) Uh, no guests, we have Silver, we have James, and we have King, and also myself. So, let's discuss about something. Something has been going through my mind. And that something is a purple alicorn. Well, I know I Celestia will... can hold her breath a really long time, but if she's turning purple, I think uh, she should let go. No, not That's just her. Not common her. sense. Not her. Twilight. I was, I was actually... Someone's put grape juice on Cadence. I was actually about to say if we were, if you were thinking about Amy Winehouse, but then that would be wrong. <laughs> no. Oh, God. I'm talking about... It's wrong. I'm talking about Twilight. <laughs> Twilight James. <is> purple. <laughs> Amy isn't an alicorn. <laughs> She's purple, though. <laughs> oh, more now, more now than she ever has. Oh. <laughs> I mean, at this point, what's there to talk about? Mm. Uh, we, we already know. Uh, uh, yes, so I um, believe you might be referencing Twilight. Yep, yep. So I, I'm going to give Silver the floor for this one because he seems to know more about starting off analyzing stuff than me. So. Silver, the floor's yours. It should be. I've fallen asleep on it enough. <laughs> well, what can we say about Alicorn Princess Twilight Sparkle, which is a very multisyllabic title? Uh, basically, this is a topic near and dear because it was the first video I ever co- I ever did. Uh, back in the days where I thought I'd just be on my digital soapbox once a month. <laughs> but we've had a whole season to get used to the new dynamic that she's an Alicorn Princess. As far as I know, fans seem to have settled, if not to enjoyment, at least acceptance. I still see the occasional attempt at alicorn drama on uh, sites like Derpy Boru. Oh, but by and large, it, the, the storm has uh, qu- died down a little. But it doesn't really answer the question, has this uh, worked in a positive way? Has the show really uh, changed its appearance or attitude to match this new dynamic? And... Is Twilight the better for this change, or is she worse, or is she par for the course? I don't know. When when it comes to advancing a character or making them powerful or downsizing or downgrading them, it's a touchy subject because we already enjoy the current setup that we have. That was Twilight Sparkle, loves to study, and goes on awesome adventures and save the day. Suddenly... She became an alicorn. And everybody's like, no, this is not Lauren Faust's vision. You, 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 no, no. Actually, I, I'm going to be the actually guy. I'm going <laughs> to devil. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, He's going to be the devil's advocate. I, I'm going to do this because Lauren Faust actually, what her original idea for Twilight was for her to become the successor of, of Princess Celestia. So sooner or later, Twilight was going to grow wings. With Lauren Faust or without Lauren Faust, she was going to end up turning into an alicorn. Because I guess there is no other way to become the substitute of Celestia than uh, turning into a princess herself. Or maybe if this show was a bit more progressive, which it kind of is in some ways, but maybe they would have turned turned her into a queen. Remember that Lauren wanted Celestia to be a queen and she ended up having to settle with princess. Because the Disney rule that queens are evil, princesses, princesses are good... But even now, Disney is knocking down that perspective with uh, movies like Frozen. My opinion on the uh, on Twilight becoming a princess is my, when I first saw it, which admittedly, considering I watched the first film first, and I 
I didn't know. I thought that's just how she was until I started watching the episodes. Um, when I saw the drama and everything, uh, I sort of saw it as, and I've seen it in other shows where the main character's power and social status goes up. Character development seems to go down because you're not, people aren't always interested in the all powerful leaders. They're interested in the underdog. So if, oh, suddenly she's got wings and suddenly she's a princess and suddenly she has all this power, as we saw in episode, uh, the last episode of season four, uh, you can think, oh, well, suddenly she's not as interesting as a character. So I'm kind of looking forward to season five developing Twilight as a character now, because now she's actually got roles to fill rather than just a title slapped on, slapped on along with some wings. So I think it's going to be interesting. And for myself, I went through the multiple stages of grief uh, with Twi- when Twilight first descended. I I got into the show in season two, so I had gotten to know her as a Unicorn, Twilight Sparkle. So when they revealed an Alicorn, I was like, "Wait, what? What is this? I don't know what to I don't know what to make of this. What are you doing? I don't like change. Don't change. <laughs> oh, no change. No change. Everything has to stay the same." <laughs> There is something wrong with the house. I don't like change. <laughs> uh, <laughs> family, family guy quote there. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but uh, I, I've grown to used to the look. I've grown interested. But the greatest frustration I have is that, as King says, that, that she hasn't really been developed a lot. In fact, for a good chunk of season four, she was just trying to live life as normal, and sometimes you'd think even the uh, the whole of Equestria forgot she'd been given a new title. Uh, I think the most infamous is the Manhattan scene, where mm. asking for a cab, they all refuse uh, Princess Twilight. And, and it's funny, the defense a lot of people put up is that this is New York. They wouldn't give a cab to Obama if he asked. Uh, can't argue with that, but all I want them to say is, sorry, Princess, you got to wait like the rest of us. True, true. Or if they just said, excuse me, princess. <laughs> I, I say that, yes. I throw the monitor out of the window. <laughs> oh. I, I bow down to said monitor. That's, that's a great point. <laughs> um, I suppose when you look at it, it's... I mean, she could have played that I'm a princess now, do it as a play card, but what does that show to the kids? That shows once you've got power, you should probably flaunt it. That's not a good idea, especially considering that episode, which was a rarity generosity episode. True. Uh, that probably would have been a bit of a mixed message. One thing, I... that, one thing that you have to consider, though, is that um, the, the decisions from one to three, it's basically the hero's journey, and we're following Twilight from the beginning to the end. I, I cut up my little pony uh, halfway through season one, the episode that was the most recent one was episode 16. It was like Sonic Rainbow. So I uh, I have been following it for a long time. So I, I, I ended up growing fond of twice. So when they announced that they were going to give her wings, I think I went through the same thing Silver went. But then I was like, well, it kind of makes sense with this character that has been through hell and back, quite literally, because in one episode she goes to Tartarus. Uh, so... It, it, it that kind of makes sense that they ended up giving her a, a reward. Because then what kind of message are you giving to the children watching the show? That if you work hard, you study, you study a lot, you are uh, gentle, educated, polite, and smart, what kind of reward do you get for that? And sooner or later, everybody, everybody... Okay, some people don't get a reward even when they do all of that, but why shouldn't you be that way? Being a good person, it's its own reward. So... Turning her into a princess is great for those three seasons. But then they have to deal with the what uh, What now? Something that many Disney movies don't even care doing. Like when, you know, the ending of uh, Snow White, classic ending. Prince goes to her, he saves her life, and then they go live into the castle. Okay, what's going to happen next? What comes after? That's something that... I think no other movie or TV show has treated, well, and this show is this show is doing it, well, which Jim, is very interesting. I, I need to the, point out something for you, like the original Cinderella movie. Uh, you remember Cinderella? She got the gossipers, and then Prince found out that oh, you're my love, and then put on slippers, and then had a happy life at the end. Cinderella yeah. two came out, and then Cinderella three. 
Um, I'm talking about classic Disney movies. I'm not talking about the ones that were direct to DVD because in that case, I'll have to talk about Lion King <laughs> 2. I have to talk about... about uh, talk about all the Disney films. Yeah, Bambi 2 and Bambi 3 and all the Tarzan prequels and Mulan 2. No, we also have if, to talk about... So about... yeah, Norman, I'm talking about classic, classic yeah. uh, story, classic movie. Okay. The, don't the get fact... him started. Yes. <laughs> Yes, don't get me started. <laughs> Change the subject. But, um, no, but I mean, yeah, I mean, when you think about it, this show is doing something that is not done very often. So whenever they make a, whenever they make a mistake or, or whenever they make a, a questionable choice, like, you know, uh, uh, Twilight Time being a... Being a it, it was a, I like the episode, but I agree with anybody who says they completely underplay the character of Toilet Sparkle. But whenever they, they make a quote-unquote mistake like that, I always say, well, this is new territory for not just them, but us as well. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you have done this differently? True. And not many people have an answer for that. Yeah. You said that uh, they might have underplayed Twilight Sparkle, yes. I, I think they might, like, upon thinking upon that, they might have a really good plan. Uh, look at season four. Um, how did that play out? The... the, the, the they padded out the personalities and character development of the other main six uh, with the rainbow powers and everything. Mm. Now look at how Twilight got her rainbow powers. Who developed there? It wasn't really Twilight. It was Discord. Maybe season five is a big uh, thing. You know, not a say thing. Uh, a big character development for Twilight as a princess and as a, as a say, person mm. pony. Because, um, I mean, you saw all the other guys, like Rainbow Dash, for example. She grew up. Uh, from season, you know, episode one, where she's laughing at Twilight with puffy hair, <laughs> to uh, the episode uh, with the Cuban Crusaders, where Scooby is really upset. Uh, she's more of like not a mother figure, a uh, sister, oh. sisterly figure. Dude, I will say that the character that has the most development in the entire show is Rainbow Dash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in terms I mean, of personality uh, wise, uh, yes. Yeah, I'm not going. I, I, let's not let's not um, drift apart. We're talking about Twilight here. Mm, true. Yes, about uh, but yes, but um, that's so. I I say that season four was uh, a character development for the rest of them. Maybe season five could be for just Twilight to grow as a pony and princess. Mm. Well, I hope, responsibilities. I hope not, because then that would mean the other five characters are super are all but superfluous. It's just got to be a mix. And the weird thing is. Twilight was present in all of their stories, but she probably had the least amount of focus in season four. Mm. I was just trying to count in my head the episodes that were truly Twilight centric. Three's a crowd, uh, and then uh, Twilight's Kingdom. But I think that's it. What about what about the oh. the the the, fina the the premiere Princess Twilight Sparkle? Oh, there. Yes, the at that end testing testing one two three and maybe oh. trade yet. But yeah. More of a group episode. Or what about? Um, well, I know that I say that she was underplayed in Twilight Time, but uh, I love I love the idea of a princess, all that like freely, all that stuff, and her she's just stuffing her face full of <laughs> I, I love this. Thing. I just I love yum, 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 yum. that is the one of my favorite scenes, not just of the season but of the entire series, <laughs> because it's like yeah, regal, all that. Oh my god, she's a cute little princess for toys and all that, and she's covered in ketchup, <laughs> uh, cleaning but... her face with another hamburger before it's her first <laughs> but, but, her with it. Um, James, are, are we has her get... cake. Twilight has her burgers. <laughs> are, are we gonna get inappropriate with Twilight's face being covered? Oh god, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. 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 Oh god, yes, no! I, I'm alone here. But anyway, like, like I was saying before, like and now on the NBS show after that. Oh god, no! We don't have that. <laughs> I believe that episode was also Twilight was more of the plot device in that episode <laughs> more than the. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Norman. We are off the rail. You cannot control this, and you cannot edit this out because we are not swearing. Oh, uh, yeah, so true. <laughs> mm. So, That's bleeping right. Yeah. <laughs> so, but like I was saying, no, but, in uh, yeah, go ahead. No, so, no, I was saying in in season one, we have the beginning of Twilight Sparkle learning the meaning about friends. Like, what is um, what is it to have friends that we have in season one, and in season two, it's a bit confusing since they got no idea what they wanted to do, and we got like oh. 
we need to stop the letters to Celestia thing. We need to find a way to improve that. What do? Everyone gets to write a letter to Celestia. Yay! So from that point on, it's like the development of other characters. And in season three, it's the development of Twilight becoming a princess. In step by step becoming a princess, that is. Um, uh, I'm going to say n- disagree. I'm going to disagree on that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I disagree as well. You're going to say exactly the same thing that I'm going to say, Silver. I predicted. All right, but anyway, uh, in season four, it's... It, uh, season four is one of those situations where what is the end game here? Because Twilight Sparkle is a princess now. And what does she do? Like, she doesn't have a proper title. She's Princess Twilight Sparkle. That's about it. And not until the end of the season, she's uh, she has the moniker of Princess Twilight Sparkle, Princess of Friendship. Uh Princess of Friendzone. Uh, go ahead, Silver. Norman, you kind of interrupted Silver there. <laughs> sorry, sorry. But I just wanted to yeah, end no, my thingy. What are you going to say about disagreeing with uh, him on season three? Because I am going to agree with whatever you have to say. I know exactly what you're, what you're going to say. Go for it, man. Well, there isn't. there wasn't a sense of lead up in season three, which is perhaps the most frustrating aspect. Uh, at the end of the Crystal Empire, you see Celestia and Luna holding up this mystery notebook. And you're like, ooh, what's that? And then for the rest of the season, it's pretty par for the course. It's, you know, the ponies having their little adventures, their slice of life stuff. And then suddenly, here's the journal. You're a princess, Twilight. Yeah. And we're all so happy. And, you know, that was the that was the thing that undermined Alicorn Twilight's introduction. Yeah, I, I, The show was telling me how to react. Hmm. It was like, no, no, you don't sell me. I should be so happy about this. Let me feel it. True. Mm. I, I, I Beep, do. boop, sad, uh, happiness to happiness detected feel happiness <laughs> I, I do agree it's with that you're not robots I do agree insert with happiness you. here <laughs> I, oh I do. That you must be smiling right else. now oh, god. we're back to plot device here aren't oh, we oh god no but I do agree that with is, what you uh, sorry uh, no I, I to kind of counter because I, I like to cover every every point of view um, when we when we talk about uh, Alicorn Twilight and some people will say that some people will argue, but you see Twilight practicing magic throughout the entire season, and she's learning new things, and she's learning new tricks, and it's like there is kind of like a, a stealth growth to the character. No, there isn't. There isn't. It's she goes from from oh, there is a, this book at the end of the f- second episode on the premiere, and then the same book appears on the season finale, and twenty two minutes of song result princess, and yeah. you're like what? And it's like it to me personally that works. That's fine with me, but it it is very unfulfilling for some folks. Yeah. I, I do. So I, I I do agree with what you guys said here, and especially what Silver said about the lead up. Because if everyone remembers in season one, we had the lead up to the best night ever, where Twilight gets ticket, <laughs> Twilight, yes, uh, Rarity makes dress. Um, dress almost get eaten by Paris sprites and so on. You, at least you have a lead up there. And yeah, the, the Grand Galloping Gala has more build up than Twilight turning into a princess. Yeah, and in season two, it was what was it again? In season two, was in season two there was there was no build up for season two at all because the finale was the the wedding and the build up for the wedding is like, hey Twilight, you have a brother. <laughs> like uh, what? What? How? But, uh, ask Hasbro's marketing department. But, well, you see, when a Marin and a Stallion oh, love God, each no. other very much, <laughs> no. and they insert happiness <laughs> into the plot. <laughs> this Cadence is another princess. Where would be hiding this princess? Nowhere. Push his door aside. There's just a cage in there. <laughs> what I find hilarious is one standout thing for season four is that it didn't introduce a new princess. <laughs> if you count Luna's Return, every season has featured one new princess until then. Oh, God. You're correct. Oh, God, no. yeah. So, so uh, there have been some <laughs> merchandising pictures for season five, well, and I Kailar? won't spoil anything. I don't know. I I haven't seen season five. Give me a month. And even true, then. True. I don't know. I mean, I've seen toys about baby Skylar, and that is something yeah, we that, don't need the, to talk about. No, the baby Skylar toys, there was a rumor going on that Twilight was going to become an aunt, so uh-huh. she was going to have a... She was going to have a niece in the shape of Princess Skyla. But Uh, then somebody went and said, no, 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 Princess Skyla is actually Twilight Sparkle's daughter. (laughs) And everybody was like, everybody was like, then, then who's, who's the father? Flash Sentry. Shannon Armor, Flash Sentry? What? Uh, I, I can already hear 
fan fiction fiction writers everywhere crying and but at the same time as crying tears of sadness from their canon being destroyed to tears of joy for the new canons they can come up with just from what you've said alone. Twilight Sparkle should have a feeling with my OC. How dare you? Oh god. Actually, Twilight Spark the father is Big Macintosh. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, oh. Uh, before you realize that Big Macintosh is the father of every single pony in Pony Bill. <laughs> Why? Because he's the only male in like a 100 mile radius. No, 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 no. The only male stallion with an actual talking role, really. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, and he has three words. Oh, true. Sometimes just one. <laughs> uh, but anyway. But, no, uh, okay, back to Twilight Sparkle. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Who, who is currently single. Mm, true, 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 true. <laughs> Yeah, current uh, single, and uh, who has no connection with uh, the Twilight that we have seen in the comics or in the Equestria Girls movies. Oh yeah, Th- those are separate canons to get all together yes. now. Like we've, yes. we've just been focusing Although, about. Is the movie is separate? Not really, hundred uh. percent, but it's it's strange. We'll have to see what they do with it in season five, like referencing the mirror. If if it's in the background, like hey, it's in the background. Oh, this is canon. Well, Big Jim Miller's castle. Yeah, true. Big, Big, Big Jim Miller and uh, and Megan McCarthy. No, I, I'm not sure about Jason Thiessen, but they both said that the comics and the Equestria Girls movies they do not influence with the TV show. Uh, I don't know. I must have said this like a thousand times, but mm-hmm. I don't get tired of saying it because <laughs> apparently people don't get the point. Is that uh, the the TV show that My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, the one that we all lo- know and love, that is canon tier one. Mm-hmm. And the comics and the movies are canon tier two. That means that whatever happens in the show affects both the comics and the and the movies. But what happens in the comics and the movies doesn't affect the TV show. Mm-hmm. So if suddenly we have an arc where Twilight is completely useless and says, we cannot attack these um, uh, bulls with magic because they are sentient beings of Equestria and we need to be civil. You know that that is not going to happen in the show. Yeah. Still bitter, James? Uh, like... Yes, and they don't <laughs> keep getting better because the newest arc is... Oh, God, please, don't, tell, don't get me. Don't get me. I'm like a shotgun. You don't want me to... You don't want to pull my trigger or else I will never... He's like, he's like a madman postman. Oh, God. Yes. <laughs> it's like I a don't, pecking order. I'd mention. I don't oh, want to be it? anywhere near your trigger. Oh, you God. Don't. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm in a naughty mood today. Goodbye. I have a very, oh, sh- I have a very short fuse when it comes to talking about the, the newest... Uh, uh, story arcs that have been going out. Thank God for the Friends Forever series. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh my God! Um, <laughs> Norman, it's like that uh, pecking order we mentioned. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's the show, the co- uh, the show, the comic slash movies, uh, the toy sets, and then the head cannons. Yep, yeah, true. The, there's a pecking order <laughs> there. To, to pecking order. <laughs> pecking order. <laughs> but uh, there is one thing that in Equestria Girls that I think did carry forward with Twilight. Uh, it's not a show element, but rather a theme. Mm-hmm. And because I'm at the time we're doing this, I'm working on my Equestria Girls review, so I'm going to spoil this much of my opinion. Ooh, okay. Uh, the very start of Equestria Girls, Twilight's asking, saying, "Just because I have wings and a horn doesn't mean I'll be a good leader." Mm-hmm. And she she goes through this okay. trial of trying to get, get her crown back through the most ludicrous means possible, and. By the end, we're meant to believe that she's become comfortable with the concept of being a leader. But I, I ask you all, how much did she really lead through that movie? How much did she interact with her with the students she was trying to win over? When you think not, about not it, not at right? all. Yeah. Considering that there is only three days for her to win the crown, yeah. which, by the way, oh no, no, don't get me started <laughs> on on the first the first movie because it's like Twilight. If you had half a brain, you will be oh crown. Thank you. Fit. <laughs> Run away with it and then go through the portal. I got the crown! <laughs> uh, well, the truth is both she and, she and Sunset jump through hoops for no reason. But it, even after the movie, uh, Twilight's Kingdom, where she, they talk about, oh, your, your destiny is, is becoming more real because you beat this guy up something awful. <laughs> the, the, the theme I noticed with trying to portray Twilight as a leader, Alicorn, sure. She's magically powerful. She's like, she was the most powerful unicorn out there, it seemed. And so this seemed like the nat- next natural step. 
But when it's time to talk about her being a ruler and leader across any of the medium, I'm just not seeing it because it's always the same approach as when the series started. Get with her friends, get the magical WMD, zap the, <laughs> zap the villain, party. That's it. Twilight has never my lover. Gonna get my friends. Make it last forever. Oh, friendship never, never ends. ends. Oh god, no. I'm writing that down on the list of things I need to animate. Oh god. Oh. oh. What, ha- I, I what know, have we wrought? I know what you mean, Silver, because Twilight has only led five characters and a dragon. <laughs> And sometimes she hasn't even led them properly because it is very difficult to get everybody under control, especially especially Rainbow Dash. Like I'm remembering the the seventh episode of season one, Dragon Shy, mm-hmm. when Twilight is trying to like get the dragon out of the cave and Rainbow Dash just rushes in, she will rushes in. Twilight cannot take control of her. And that's almost been the case in every single episode where the five, the six uh, ponies have been featured is that at least one or two is going to get out of Twilight's control. I cannot imagine her taking control of something and, uh, uh, and like, taking in charge. Hell, in the season four premiere, uh, when Applejack tells her to go away because uh, reasons, we need to have a, a meaningful re- reunion halfway through the episode. And Twilight is like, okay, fine, and she leaves. Like, that's... that's uh, no, in that case, Applejack is acting more like a princess than you are because she's been more. Uh, uh, she's. Uh, how did you say it? Impractical. She, yeah, well, uh, she's been impractical, but at least she kind of has the uh, the power to say, "Yeah, no, you go. We are staying." Well, if you Twilight should be the one saying that. It's insubordination on the other one's group behalf, really. Well, if you well, I their heads. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be great. Twilight Sparkle, the guillotine of friendship. Oh God. Uh, but if you think about you'll it, die, you'll die, but it'll feel really nice. Oh God! <laughs> but if you think about it, right? Like in the season four premiere, what Applejack says is true because she's the only a uh, figurehead authority person available besides Cadence, and yeah, she's the only princess left. Yeah. But then she comes back to the forest, and she almost gets eaten by those uh, by by the, by the vines. Yeah, I know. So but... it's like. Yeah, it's like if she decides to leave and that's it, that's perfect, but... But if, if um, this was any other series well, than Ponies, like if this was some kind of anime that is popular in Japan, Princess Twilight Sparkle would have gone to the forest with at least a few guards with her, especially mm-hmm. Flash. So you, you'll have... Oh, yeah. And they all would have died. <laughs> um, is, that not a, is that not a paradox in a way? It's, uh, you're the figurehead leader here, you need, you need to leave says the underdog to the commanding officer. <laughs> so, well, so... No, but now that I think about it, uh, in that same episode, we actually do see her doing a bit, uh, something a bit more, you know, authoritarian, in that the two guards go to her and they're like, we await for your command, you are the princess here now, because uh, Celestia and Luna are missing. Well, we I should... was so happy, I was so happy to see Twilight act- acting in, with a cool head. Like, instead of going, oh my god, Tardy, freaking out, ah, ah, she actually stays very calm and says, I want you to keep looking for Princess Celestia and Princess Luna. And I'm like, thank you for not, for not acting like a, like a spaz, like you were, you were acting at the beginning of the episode. That was, that made me happy. I was like, yeah, good. Can we please have more of that? And Twilight will be like, well, you know, I cannot do anything more because it's this script. <laughs> so <laughs> the yeah. script doesn't. Like I don't know what to do. Continue looking for the people that do know what to do while I go and try something else. <laughs> well, I try the usual approach. Now I, I agree with you that uh, James. That I love that scene. I love that she, when Twilight is in the moment, she doesn't give in to that uh, fretting and self-destructive worry. Uh, that's when she shines. But we don't get to see that very often. That was like the one time, and it was at the season start. I was waiting for Twilight the Leader Part 2, and I never saw it. Mm. Well, but it is good to know that uh, when when Princess Celestia and Princess Luna are gone, uh, Twilight can handle a situation by herself, and she can be, like, cool-headed enough to take care of, of things. But actually, when you think about it, Twilight always loses her her mind when Celestia or Luna are around. 
But when she's on her own, she's able to keep the situation under control. That is, that actually says a lot about her because, like, you know how it happens when somebody else is in charge and you might freak out or worry or something, but when you are completely on your own, uh, sooner than later you are going to end up, uh, you're going to end up having to, you know, act with a bit more of a cool head and say, okay, okay, I'm on my own. I have to fix this situation by myself because I cannot count on anybody else but me. I like to think that Twilight is like that, that she allows herself to, far, to have freakouts when somebody else is in charge. She, she, can, she feels like she can let herself go because the safety net of the, or the princesses are there. When she knows she's not got that safety net, she walks in this tightrope of responsibility. Mm-hmm. She knows she can't fall. Which is a very human thing to do, actually. Ponies are just human in different form. Oh, no. Unless it's Equestria Girls. Oh, God, no. <laughs> then oh. It's then the, it all it's makes sense. Form. Let me get the red tape. I'm going to connect the dots. <laughs> and, then uh, they, and then they're from the series Doug. Oh, no. God, I hated that show. You and the critic, my friend. You and the critic. He hated it for a reason, but I hated it for another. I don't want to go into talking about Doug. <laughs> it's not. Well, well, let's talk about one other assertion that Twilight has made throughout season four. Mm-hmm. Uh, now that she is a princess, she's continually downplaying it, saying, I'm not better than any pony. Which, to my way of thinking, okay, it's it's great humility on her part that she doesn't view others as inferior based on her station. But there also needs to be an admittance that, yes, I have a more prominent place in society now. <clears throat> what Twilight does carries a little more weight than your average pony. Which is why I still don't get why that hamburger shop wasn't saying, hey, look, a royal eats here. <laughs> we should charge Burgers. the prices up by triple. In, in Spanish, you show me a burger joint that has a royal suite, <laughs> I'll show you a burger joint that I'm not paying money for. Oh, can, I, expensive can, I, can, I, can I make a parallelism with something that happened to me in real life that okay. it doesn't have the same impact, I know. Mm-hmm. It's not talking about the regal person, but it's talking about a be- fairly famous individual. All right, go ahead. So mm-hmm. um, I, was in, I was in Madrid in a DVD shop uh, DVD shopping mall. It was huge. And, and then I go to the horror DVD section. I look to my right, and there is standing Guillermo del Toro. Oh, okay. There he is, what, buying some DVDs. And nobody bats an eye. Nobody says anything. Nobody walks to him to, to ask for an autograph or anything else. They just let him just do, do his thing because, hey, he can do whatever he wants because he's Guillermo del Toro. But I can guarantee you every single person in the shop was screaming internally. Because Guillermo del Toro was buying DVDs, <laughs> and he was right there. The guy who did Pan's Labyrinth, Pacific Rim, and Hellboy was within walking distance, and nobody did anything. You didn't so, even see high things? No, I didn't. Dude, you cannot just walk to Guillermo no. del Toro and say hi. So <laughs> to me, the way that I see that scene in the hamburger shop with Twilight and all that, I'm pretty sure all the ponies were... <laughs> Freaking out internally, but they wouldn't say anything because it's it's Twilight Sparkle. You cannot just walk to her and say, "Hey, Twilight!" Hey. <laughs> Except for Pinky. Oh, Except God. for well, but that's because Pinky has I, been I, I. Pinky has been friends with her. Uh, with her, that will be the equivalent of Ron Perlman going to Guillermo del Toro and saying, "Hey, how's it going?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I kid, but mostly I'm just thinking of that sad-looking stallion in the background. It's like, er, Princess Twilight won't notice me. <laughs> Uh, well, I but, me. Um, but, I can, I can, get, what I can <laughs> get what you feel like with that, James, when you saw someone famous. Um, it was similar. Uh, it's something I had, which was the Queen was going on a parade around the town. Uh, well, the country, but she stopped by the city. And I was, you know, I couldn't, like, touch her because she was in a car. But just seeing the Queen nearby, like, I'm not, like, patriotic or anything. Um, in fact, I'm a bad Brit, to say the least. Um, but I saw the Queen, and I realised that just by looking at her, you could just tell she was d- different. Like she might not, like she probably to herself thought, oh, "I'm not much more important than anyone." But y- you know, everyone else seems to think that they are to the point where you don't want to interrupt them or even bother them. But... So if I saw a princess eating a burger, I'd be like, "Let's leave that alone," because. <laughs> it's probably secret spy somewhere about to jump me. <laughs> yeah, but here, here's another thing. L- let's not okay. Uh, here's another thing. We don't have. We don't even need to look that far. Like us, we we may see ourselves as nothings. Like we're just normal Joe Schmoes who just do this for funs. But I'm 
telling you right now that James Silver and you King are special in your own rights. Like Silver Quill has a YouTube page full of fans that are willing to wait for his video to come out and comment and have a discussion with him and just have fun. And they see you, uh, they put you at a high, uh, what you call this, a high pedestal, pedestal standard, or standard, or even they think of your opinion highly. And you, James, you you do good art and you you do good art. You have a nice personality and you have a lot of fans and friends at that. And you... I actually am fighting against discussing against you for that because I don't believe it myself. Yeah, but yeah. The, the thing is... But, I mean, Norman, you have a show as well. I mean, yeah. look at this. You can't discount yourself. You have a show. Yeah, true, but... <laughs> I mean, I'm special in the sense that I have a padded cell on, on standby for me. That's the kind of special I am. I mean, we've got someone who does art. We have a, a, a podcaster and we've got an amazing video but... video maker and then I've got a padded cell on standby. No, but... I mean, so... We also have a, st- a padded cell as well. Dude, I thought it was the only one. I've got like three. <laughs> wow! Oh my <laughs> god! Father wow, Cell Body! You're right, that is one big ego. You need three rooms. <laughs> I need three rooms. The, the second one is indoor plumbing. Oh god. No, but, <laughs> but like I, like I said, like, like I'm saying here is. Padded, padded toilet seat. <laughs> oh wow. But, oh, yeah. but like I'm saying here is that each of us are special in, in our own rights. Like me, I'm a podcaster, but I don't, like individually, we don't see it. Like, I don't see the fans. I don't see anything that makes me feel special. And I'm sure you guys feel the same way too. But in actuality, we are special in our own rights. But we just need someone to let us know and remind us that, hey, you're doing something cool. Good job. That sounded so patronizing. It's you're doing good. Good job. Well done, chaps. <laughs> oh, now I'm thinking of those cows in Earthworm Jim. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Uh, but here's the thing: we we might have a <laughs> quote unquote celebrity status, but none of us is a community leader. Mm, true, true. Which is kind of important. Uh, at least I don't view myself as a community leader. I'll, I'm that snarky guy in the background <laughs> making jokes. Uh, Yo, we need more of your kind. <laughs> <laughs> we may have an overabundance. It's not that I want Twilight to suddenly talk down to the others, but just to take ownership. Yes, I'm in a role of importance in the culture, and with that comes responsibility. The more she denies it, this is a trend I see in a lot of entertainment, especially for the teen audience. You have this main character, usually heroine, who insists that she's nothing special, uh, but yet everyone around her is saying, oh, yes, you are, we will die for you. And it, it reaches a point where you feel like it's almost false modesty. The Hunger you, Games. <laughs> yeah. the, hun- the Hunger Games, Twilight, where you... The other Twilight, where uh, <laughs> oh, you definitely think, yeah, you're you're not worth it. And, uh, well, even like Divergent, from what li- I saw the movie, that's about it. Yeah, so, so did I. Divergent was... <sighs> damn, damn it. <laughs> but basically, every time Twilight says, oh, there's nothing special about me. Yes, there is. For better or worse, you're wearing that crown. True. I'd love to see you own that. True. Yeah. And now, I think it would be an interesting episode concept where she gets really full of herself and she has to be brought back down to earth. I don't think Twilight will do that no, because she has been she has been that kind of I am not better than anyone uh, since since Bo- Bose Busters, yeah, true. where Trixie comes into town and Twilight obviously has much more powerful magic, m- much bigger uh, proficiency in magic than. Uh, Trixie does, mm-hmm. but yet Twilight doesn't want to believe she's uh, very strong because she doesn't want to lose the support of anybody else. <clears throat> and even after after they tell her that you are not going to lose our friendship because we are very proud of having you as our friend and this is a part of who you are, so we don't have the right to judge you for it, that uh, shows that, yeah, I don't think Twilight is ever going to have an episode where she's completely full of herself. And she, if she ever does... Uh, I'm pretty sure her friends are going to take her down a notch. True, true. The same way that they did, they, the same way that Applejack did with Rainbow Dash. Uh, Rarity, or no, Applejack did with Rarity in simple ways. Mm-hmm. Or Rainbow Dash did uh, or Rainbow Dash got in <laughs> Merdu World. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. However, oh. that is about personalities. Uh, Rainbow Dash and Rarity could have one of those episodes because they are f- enough flawed that they, they can allow themselves to make mistakes. But I think they are starting to write. Tw- 
criticism here to the writers. They are starting to write Twilight as so perfect, she doesn't even have the, the possibility of having flaws. Oh, wow, that's not good. And talking about... Mm, yeah, they, a perfect that's... character can't have character development, and that makes them boring. Yeah, true. And talking about flaws... <laughs> okay, <to> shining armor. <laughs> I was just thinking something. Like, that's why I don't like shining armor. He's so bloody prince... Prince Charming whisked away with a beautiful wife and has everything perfect and he's got love and all that. Uh, the only the only flaw he has is that he loves his wife so much he can't see the changeling and ah. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm not going to rant about this. But anyway, <laughs> but okay, uh, I, 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 I like I Shannon Armor. I like to think he is the reincarnated pony version of Keanu Reeves in Point Blank. <laughs> <Bro>. <laughs> but actually, I think he. I do think he has one flaw. He likes to micromanage. <laughs> Who's Shannon or Twilight? Is that not like a side product of both? You know, being both. a captain of the guard. Mm. Well, uh, maybe, but the thing is, the dude being a good captain would mean delegating. Have you ever seen him turn roles over to someone else? No, no, I guess not that I noticed. But even in the middle of, even in the middle of wedding, you see him. <laughs> oh, I figure we'll see him for maybe a scene in season five, just one. <laughs> say, hey, Twilight. Is- and leaves. Hey, hey Twiley, I'm still here. Bye. <laughs> hey Twiley, I'm Twiley, here. Twiley, man. <laughs> Do you remember those toy sets? They are still available at Toys R Us. Okay, bye. <laughs> uh, t- talking about imperfections, um, in the comics, Cold. Twilight's personality in the cowboy arc, the cowboy, the oh, cowboy yeah. arc, that one, that one, go. that one, like, oh. it's not oh. so much personality as it is. Sorry, I cannot say anything else. Katie Cook is writing me. That one. And everyone brace uh, for anger. <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, oh. when when we first read the whole comic, it seems to be written in a good way or almost in the sense like, hey, this is Twilight from the show. Yay. But as time goes on, like, do you guys feel that it's slowly changing? Um... Depends on the writer, depends on who's behind the wheel of the writing. When uh, when some writers take care of uh, writing for Twilight, they are fine. But I think, uh, and I am not going to, okay, I'm kind of going to ditch Katie Cook's writing on this one, but I'm starting to feel like she is deviating from the from show Twilight more than any other writers are doing. And it is clear that she's having a lot of fun. Hell, she was having a lot of fun during the Reflections arc, and I really enjoyed that one. But the result of the cowboy arc, the way that they nerfed Twilight with red tape and paperwork, well, it's a magical land full of magical horses that talk and fly and make magic and grow mustaches and dragons. Mm-hmm. Are we supposed to get all of these... Um, uh, a paperwork and bureaucracy involved in here? That's first that's too real, second that's too boring, and third that's too b- That's not a word. I mean, I'm not sure. How administrative you can get being a princess. Well it's a, that's the other thing that's been pre- present in both the uh season four and the comics. We don't know what real authority Twilight wields because she never tries to wield it. Yeah. That's also tying into the modesty aspect. There are times where you wonder Shouldn't Twilight, you know, flex her authority a little? And I've, I'm still hoping we'll see an episode where her friends almost kind of try to take advantage of her authority. Not in a malicious way, but we'd all be tempted. Your best yeah. friend just became president. You sure you don't want to hitch a ride on Air Force One someday? <laughs> <laughs> I Actually, you know what? I think what her authority is, her authority is to sell toys. Oh, oh dear. Uh, she, she's going to have to fight Princess Cadence for that. It, but it is it is it is true because when you think about it, um, hell, even Cadence has a role. Like Celestia raises the sun uh, and takes care of the daylight and Canterlot. Princess Luna raises the moon and looks over the night and uh, watches over the citizens while they're asleep. Princess Cadence takes care of the Crystal Empire and guards the Crystal Heart, which uh, uh, spreads love all over Equestria. But what about Twilight? Well, that's what the... does she, what do Ooh. you do? Do you raise Maybe. the Twilight? What do you do? Maybe, maybe that's, well, how close is her castle to the old castle of the Royal Sisters and the Tree of Harmony? Maybe that will grow into something similar to the Crystal, not as big as the Crystal Empire, but maybe Ponyville will expand and 
maybe the ever free won't be as dangerous or something. I don't know. Well, um, the, the the fact that the the fact that they have the tree, the chest, the new castle, and all that, and I'm talking about the new castle that she has, not the city new castle, but yeah. the <laughs> new castle that Twilight Sparkle has, is that they have all of those elements, but they didn't expand on them at all in season four. I mean, I like the fact that they got rid of the elements of harmony, which, to be honest, it was getting tired of. Okay, you have to go to the you have to go to the vault, get the magic weapons of mass destruction, like what Silver just said, and yeah. and go beat the bad guy by throwing a rainbow at his face. <laughs> at least they now turn it into special powers, which I think yeah. that is a very clever idea. Actually, not having to so, use the trinket is inside them. They've gone from getting the six keys for the friendship rainbow nuke to having magical rainbow nuke powers. <laughs> yeah, which, I'm alright with that. The, desi- that. the designs are hideous, but I like the idea. Yeah. But but now, I don't think it's a spoiler for season five since the toys are already uh, oh. declaring the theme for next mm-hmm. season. The could do my magic? It, yes. That, and I got to say, really, it's just their cutie marks spread all over their bodies, which, again, sounds kinky. Oh, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh God, no. <laughs> But uh, I got to say, I've seen some of the artwork and I just like, oh, no, guys, come on. What ha- as much as I like that they're giving them superpowers or, you know, super abilities for climax uh, battle, I kind of miss the Grand Galloping Gala dresses, which were well-designed, unique, and if you need to make a toy sale, at least it's quality. Yeah. Th- this visual riot, both Rainbow Power and Cutie Bark Magic, is just like, ugh. Yeah. My eyes, they burn. <laughs> I have a sudden uh, story idea. We should, uh, what happens if the main six get cutie pox while in this rainbow form? Oh, God. Think of all the cutie pox. <laughs> and it reminds me of the Pokerus, which is, you know, remember that Pokemon virus that makes their stats uh, boost up when they have it? Yeah. It kind of like, it's kind of like that, but it's cutie pox magic. <laughs> uh, I don't remember that. No, I'm old. Yeah, I think, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, it is, it is, it is an, in, it, it is, Sad that that season finale was perfect. It was awesome. It was great. And then you have the rainbow power designs. <laughs> hey, the... you, like, like you said, you can totally make something more appealing to the eye and then change it for the toy. You don't need to um, straight up put the toy in there, which is kind of like I still kind of scratch my head at the design of the new the new princess castle that they have. It's kind of eh, doesn't gaudy. Yeah, or... it doesn't match with the rest of the town. It feels like the Crystal Empire just shot one of their houses and it grew into the <laughs> into the center of Ponyville. It looks like it looks like a rim, uh, like a Crystal Empire. Uh, uh, like yeah. it belongs to the Crystal Empire. Crystal Empire spreading its seed everywhere. Oh, I still oh. like the fact that Twilight has a castle now instead of the library. To be honest, I I am not so sad that the library is gone. Because I was getting, I was getting really tired of. Well, she's a princess. She's regal. She has all that. And where does she live in a library? <laughs> hey, libraries are Not cool. That's a free library. Fez in libraries is cool. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, I I will say on the design of the of the castle, I'm yeah, I'm still getting used to its presence. It does contrast so much with the with the cottage setting of Ponyville. Yeah. But uh, the big thing, and pun intended, there is when you look at the the shots of the round table chamber and the library and that super long hallway they were all walking through, mm-hmm. Twilight and Spike are living in that castle by themselves. Wow. That is a tremendous amount of wasted space. Well, soon you... And it must, feel kind of lo- it must feel kind of lonely. Well, soon you'll have people working there because, you know, Twilight... It is with Spike. I know, but soon people <laughs> will need to work there. And... Spike's a thing. <laughs> Well, soon, sooner than later, they're going to have to talk about what's inside the castle because, uh, one, marketing, they have to promote their toy, of course, but then they also have to talk about what's going on in there. I mean, what is this place that's so much better than the Golden Oaks Library to make them live in there? Like, what, what are the advantages? And this is what I am hoping they do for Season 5. The, I, my realistic perspective for Season 5 I want it to have ponies in it. Yeah. That's it. That's it. But if they are going to do something with that that castle, please take all of the books from the castle of the two sisters 
and take them inside the new castle because yeah. uh, because first preservation that will be good second substitution for the new uh, for the the books that were lost when the golden oaks library blew into pieces well james if you but can... uh, but but also because she's going to ha- she is not going to leave all of those books in the middle of the forest well, uh, well, yeah, she has. She has so far. <laughs> well, but I'm pretty sure she has no other choice because the. Why would you put the, them? Li- the Yeah, where would you where would you put them? The library was full. Yeah. So maybe she will she will move them to her new place. I don't know. But, I really want her to do something like that. That would be very twilight well, of her. We we'll have to wait and see. But James, if you do remember in the Rainbow Rocks movie, uh, she got books from Cantalot. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, so... and, uh, uh, and also the vibrating book. Yeah. The. Yeah. Okay, wow, do we did we have to put it that way? <laughs> yeah, I wanted I worded it especially for you to say something, so but <laughs> it's like uh you know, that's the section where Sunset wrote her fanfic. Oh god, no. <laughs> I am wrapping it up, I'm putting a bow on Why? the gift of a word just for you. So Why but... is Kellus Whisper playing in my head right now? Oh god. <laughs> I, to be fair, like on the, the, the castle, I'm kind of drawing comparisons between the Justice League's crystal crystal base <laughs> and the new superpowers and everything. I, I think they're borrowing heavily from Justice League Ooh. at this point. Oh, dear. But, okay. Uh, uh, oh, sorry? Well, I just want to say, my hope for the castle, at least, because uh, there are just two things I'd like to see in that place. One, well, three things. The first is warmer colors. Mm-hmm. I I drew the library for a comic and uh, for a background of one of my videos, and I realized there's a tremendous amount of blues and greens and violets. Yeah. It's all very cool colors, and home is supposed to give this warm feel. A lo- you look at the main six homes, and most of them rely on warm colors, uh, okay. which makes them... And the Golden Oaks Library itself was a lot of earthy but warm colors. Mm -hmm. Uh, So what I'd love to see, part two, is a study for Twilight. A small room, maybe a little bit like Celestia's, that's her personal space. And just just sort of a refuge that feels a little more cozy than this cold crystal castle. Alliteration. <laughs> well, and last but not least, number three, I'd like Spike to have his own room finally. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. a growing boy. He needs his space. <laughs> Indeed. I, you know what? Now that you mentioned about... Private, private yeah. area. <laughs> now that you mention about uh, Twilight having a study, uh, that is something that I didn't thought of before, but I absolutely agree. Um, okay, uh, I'm going to draw a parallelism here. Do you guys... Have you, any of you guys played Mass Effect? Yeah, I have. No. The first one. The first one. Do you remember uh, how in the Normandy there is um, there is a room? Shepard has a room, and it is the most impersonal, impractical, uncomfortable room you can imagine. Mm-hmm. Like, and and then in the sequel they uh, gave her, her they gave Shepard. I, I play with a female Shepard, so that's why I say her. <laughs> they gave Shepard uh, 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 th- their own quarters with like uh, an aquarium <laughs> and. Uh, a, a desk, everything you have, like a like a part with couches and everything. She has uh, models and all that, and can even get a space hamster. It was <laughs> it was really cool. It was really it was really great, and it felt like Shepard could be there and just uh, do their own thing. Should... That was an improvement. That was a big improvement. True, and it was something that didn't need to be in the game, but it was there. So yeah, yeah. I think that Twilight having something. Uh, a room of her own where she can have her own her books and uh, I don't know pictures of things that have happened like I don't know fan fics. windows <laughs> window pa- window panels and uh, artifacts or remains of previous missions like the, she could have the uh, the diary that uh, where she wrote the last Starfield uh, Starfield spell. Or her Starship the Bearded costume mm. on the corner or something like that. That would be great. <laughs> that would be great to see. Okay. So, yeah, I agree. I didn't think about that, and I completely agree with you, Silver. I would love to see that as well. All right. Now. Or the stuffed heads of all her enemies. Oh, God, no. Oh, uh, good. <laughs> no, no, no. Even better. She has a connection with Tyrek, and every now and then she throws uh, a, a banana peel or something at his face. <laughs> no, that's the, just... The seven heads of all her enemies. So what would be who? Luna? <laughs> uh, Sombra's disappeared. <laughs> Chrysalis is nowhere to be seen. Trixie. Uh, 
Trixie. <laughs> Tri- I was going to say Trixie, but she's she's kind of reformed. Oh, come There's on. My little, my little pony taxidermy is magic. <laughs> we're back, oh, to, the, no, we're no, back no. to the French you ability. You have all of the heads of the enemies hanging on the wall, and Discord is the only one that's still talking. <laughs> because Discord. <laughs> oh, God. You can have a bunch of changelings. They won't miss a few. Oh, God, no. But <laughs> that's going to be that's going to be Discord's new form of chaos, because he's reformed. Every now and again, Twilight will be walking down the hall, and she'll notice that all the pictures are tilted to one side. <laughs> oh, it's going to give her such a Because she's clearly head. got OCD, right? <laughs> she's going to be walking down and go, Discord! <laughs> Sil- Silver, why have Having a several changelings, they all look the same. You can have one, and they will be fine. <laughs> hey, that that's racist. <laughs> <laughs> or you could just, or you could just get changelings only and have them change the heads every now and again. Oh no! Th- and then there's a plaque with a sign reserved for Princess Celestia. <laughs> oh god, no! And it, and her true could out the season soon, Celestia soon. <laughs> <laughs> but. But okay, here's, okay. Uh, let's move on because we're not talking about Twilight anymore. We, we, I, I'm noticing that we want to. We are. We are. I, 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 talking I, I, about I, the things that what, that we wish to happen in season five. Yeah, but apparently, but what murder, genocide, <laughs> and regicide are in everybody's heads okay. right now. So, so let, let me just try and move Twilight's this. Twilight Castle is going to have a burger joint inside it. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. Uh, oh, fresh horse meat every Friday. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so okay, let me cannibalism. Move. Let me just move move it along uh, to. Have you watched Srini Todd oh, like God. that? Yeah, oh God. No. <laughs> uh, I ate Celestia's liver with some hay. <laughs> so mm. let me let me try and move it along to. What would you guys like to see in season five? Like this random wish list that we would like to see. Like, uh, you you guys have clearly spoken out about cannibal- cannibalism. So, yeah. <laughs> 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 Well, before before we go into what we want to see on season five, mm-hmm. uh, like, do you want to discuss anything else regarding Princess Twilight Silver? Anything that you might have left there uh, unsaid or unmentioned? I will say that this is something that came up at BabsCon last year, and it was an embarrassing moment for the fandom. There was a panel called "It's a Mayor's World," where the female writing staff uh, that was attending they got to host a panel themselves, and it was very favoring the ladies but and the strong presentation of women in the show or mayors but one guy in the audience gave them grief about how why is twilight a princess and not the others and you know she's not more special than they are and it kind of still sour grapes about this so i thought back to a piece of merchandise that appeared on on the internet but is never been followed up, which was an alicorn Fluttershy. <gasps> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so I think it was like a Chinese bootleg or something. Yeah, Tabao. Yeah. I actually thought, wouldn't that be an idea for a story in season five or beyond? That Discord, to teach Fluttershy a lesson, changes reality where it was she who became an alicorn Ooh. and not Twilight, to show that, well, all the main six are talented, skilled, and uh, very deserving of praise, not all of their personalities are suited towards the leadership role. I can't really see Pinky Applejack, well, I can't see Applejack as a leader, but she's tied to Ponyville. Mm. But most of the others just don't think, I don't think they'd flourish in that role. So you could have an episode where Princess Fluttershy kind of learns the demands of her station and gains a new appreciation for Twilight and all she can do while realizing she can still be supportive and contribute Kind of like Hurricane Fluttershy, but with a more personal uh, approach. Hmm. Hmm. Wow, something cool. That is actually that is a very good idea, actually. Uh, so that you can you can put Fluttershy, you can put whoever uh, else of the main six, but yeah, you're absolutely right in that they are all in the same level. They all have the same level of uh, importance. Mm. They do, but I wouldn't look to Pinkie Pie to lead a serious diplomatic mission unless it was with the Party Kingdom. Oh, oh no. nor 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 would you want Rainbow that. <laughs> she, she will, she will, she uh, will dare the next leader to a race and then mock them extensively, which will cause a war. Mm. Oh, you you God, don't no. you don't want that either. Um, however, would you say that that was a moment that gave grief to the fandom? I don't know if we mentioned the moment at Buck 2014 where oh God, the, no. a, a guy came to Dave Polsky and started saying how Twilight Time was the worst episode ever and why did he ruin the character of Twilight Sparkle so much. Aye. So, yeah. Which, 
to by the way the way that Dave Polsky replied was such a he was such a boss with that reply all he needed was to drop the microphone <laughs> uh. what? What did he say? Uh, he basically said, you know, I I am open to criticism as long as it's made properly and any other kind of uh, mean uh, mean way of saying uh, saying bad things about the show, I rather not ignore, uh, ignore it or not answer to it, so I decide not to answer to your uh, question. That was at Buck, wasn't it? Yep, yep. That, that, oh, that, was, was... A, that was at Buck, and the audience applauded Dave Polsky because the way that the guy was... This, he was like right behind me on the on the queue, and he was he was shaking his arms. He was kind of like flailing. with fists fists clenching, flailing his arms up and down. Why do you have to write Twilight like that? It's like why do you have to ruin a, an episode that is supposed to be about Twilight Sparkle and give it to the queue to Marcus Sanders? And it was like this is so, I am thinking. Yeah. On the floor, this is cringe worthy. But we, we, yeah. even with Dash, actually, uh, you know the uh, the the VIP dinner. Did you go to that at the book? I didn't. I did, and everyone was crowding him while he's trying to eat the dinner, just constantly mithering for autographs. And I sat back and waited until he'd finished eating. I took the time to say hi. I was sat behind him in the booth next to him, so I could have literally just tapped him on the shoulder and gone, "Hi, can you sign this?" But I thought I'd wait. And he, as a guy, I, I didn't know what he would like, and I just said thanks. He said, you you sat behind me. How come you haven't said anything? And I went, oh, you were eating. I didn't want to interrupt. So he said, oh. He scooted along and said, sit here. And I was like, <laughs> uh, okay. So what do you do? I was like, oh, I, 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 I draw art. I, 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 I like to write stories. And, like, I'm sort of, like, just saying, um, I said, oh, what would you like to see from this season? So I was like, <gasps> <laughs> oh, just anything. I, I, I love it. I just love the show. Uh, and it's not, you know, I don't want to have expectations that are going to get ruined. And he went, oh, okay then. Signed my, uh, you know, the booklet I had you sign, mm-hmm. James. Uh, and then sent me on my way. And I spent about 15 minutes talking to him one on one. That was awesome. And he's an absolutely sound guy. So the idea that someone gets angry at him for making the show, whether that be what you want or what you not want, he's making you a show. That's just. He's taking courteous. Time, he's taking time of his. Uh, he no. This is this is his job. True. This is his his uh, bread and butter. Without this, he has nothing. And I have to be honest. I didn't like Dave Polsky when he started. Uh, uh, we are not talking about Dave Polsky. Don't worry. We're gonna go back to talk about what we want in season five. But uh, Dave Polsky wasn't one of my favorite writers when he was working on season one. To, to mm. be perfectly honest, the two episodes that he wrote. I was not very happy with them. I was like, oh, God, I don't want to see another Dave Polsky episode in season two. And then he came back for season three. And Mm. my perspective for Dave Polsky did a 180. He went from one of the, one of the writers that I liked the least to my favorite writer. I, and I liked every single episode he wrote for season three. And I liked every episode that he wrote for season four. Yeah. I mean, even, even those that, I know they are not entirely good, like Dead in Don't, for example, or even even uh, Twilight Time has its has a few mistakes here and there. But all in all, he 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 is a hardworking, dedicated writer. Yeah, you and respect that about he him. was he was patient enough that he didn't walk out during the panel because the way that some people were asking him th- were asking him things. It was like if I was if I would have been Dave Polsky, I would, would have walked, I would have left. Yeah. Like yeah. I I know exactly what you're talking about because I was I was literally sat next to you seeing all this happen, <laughs> and I have completely agree with you on that. Mm-hmm. People would. It's not even like even if you dislike the guy, you don't have to be that rude. That's just uncle. Yeah. Exactly. That is like people going to. M.A. Larson throwing him red yeah. cans of Red Bull. <laughs> hey, Norman. Of yeah. Hey, Norman. Thanks for letting me on the show. You <laughs> doo-doo head. I don't know. I don't know what to say to that. Like, I don't even know how to be rude to someone like that. It's just thanks Dude. for everything, you pillock or whatever you want to say. I, I so enjoyed talking with you, you doo-doo headed ninnies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know how to feel. <laughs> this is this is me. I can make any kind of innuendo jokes about a show about pastel ponies, but I can't curse out real people. Strange is my mind. Not really. That shows Strange. that you, 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 you can you can make fun and innuendos about something that doesn't exist. But when it comes to real people, that is more difficult. True. That is a that is that is a different level of um, 
of being du- douchey. Mm. Douchey. Uh, so, Prince that, of douchey. Oh, God, no. <laughs> but, okay, oh, no. uh, now that we have discussed Lon and, Lon and, and for a while, mm. uh, about this, uh, let's talk about what Norman brought before, the, the, the things that we want to see in season five. True. Un- un- unless, unless anybody else has anything to say about Princess Twilight. My, my, expectations for season five are like i said before i'm going in blind uh but blindfolded and ball gagged (laughs) i literally don't know anything about it Mm -hmm. and that's how i went through it with season four and season four was absolutely astounding to me Mm -hmm. i absolutely loved it so i'm doing it again with season five i don't have any expectations because then i can't have them ruined true like i can't if you don't have high expectations, or if you don't have any at all, or you can be as pleasantly surprised. Mm, true. I'm going to have to make a comment regarding that, Kin, but I will be last, so uh, okay. go ahead, go ahead, guys. So, as for me, I, I'm, I'm like King. I, I'm going in blind. I, I got no idea what's going on. I got no idea what they have planned. All I know is episode 100 has background ponies, and that's about it. And honestly, what I want what I want as a wish list of what could possibly appear in season five is I want Gilda to come back. I want her to be or play a role in an episode. Like that'll be nice. That'll be nice. She hasn't been on for a long time now. And she's a very memorable character. If only, only because she only made because... Fluttershy cry. <laughs> yeah. And because she's the only character that is mean for the sake of being mean, hmm. like it's never really explained why she's that cruel or unfriendly. She's just there to be, you know, the devil ab- devil's advocate to every everything else in the show up to that point. I mean, where, up till then, where is there a major conflict between personalities? Really, hmm, true, true. But like I said I, I would really love to see her back again. And Silver, what about you? Or, or a different griffin. Not true. A different griffin, maybe. Hmm. How about a hippo griff? <laughs> eh? Eh? That, would be, oh, God, that yes. would be cool. Like, honestly, that would be cool just to see a mixed breed and people... Mm, you got me there. And and we we, and, we all will go, Silver did it first. <laughs> uh, and, I'll, and, I, and then I'll get lots of messages. Silver, your, your design isn't canon with the show. <laughs> uh, God, that's a good point. Yeah, no, never mind. Take that back. <laughs> I, I would bear the slings and arrows, <laughs> but or I was the trailblazer. <laughs> not really. Uh, but, well, okay, I have watched the spoilers because I am intrigued. I want to mull it over in my head before I go in to say, okay, here's what I'm going to watch for. You know, things just alerts. Mm-hmm. So I know some things, and I won't comment on my expectations. Broadly speaking... Well, since Cutie Mark Magic is pretty uh, a given right now, I don't consider that a spoiler because the toys have already shouted it from the rooftops. Oh, I didn't know about Cutie Mark Magic. You will soon. Just go to a I toy store. <laughs> well, then the cat's out of the bag, and really, there's not a lot. There's not a lot to give away yet. But oh, oh my, oh my, we've already brought Pussy into the show. Oh right? God. <laughs> <laughs> I love this guy. <laughs> you and me both, man. But uh, I just had this hairball idea that uh, <laughs> sorry. What one cutie mark crusader should get her mark? Oh, that's just one. You and everyone else, my friend. You and everyone else. I think that's a bit of an interesting conflict between the cutie mark crusaders because when one of them gets it, but the other ones don't. I I I have uh, I have actually heard something regarding the CMCs and their cutie marks if it's okay for me to share it but it's, I know it's kind of like breaking uh, what you were uh, saying Silver, do you mind if I go ahead and break your uh, your turn of walk tempted well, to walk away, <laughs> tempted to walk away spoilers <laughs> well like I say I've already spoiled cutie mark magic which, I know. You know, my brain can't handle it anymore <laughs> which which means of course that they everyone gets Twilight's cutie mark and they all become allegories <laughs> Laser beams would, that be, would that be similar to the changelings in a way? <laughs> That's another. I'm, you're going to give me great story ideas. I'm writing these down as we speak. <laughs> oh, see, spoilers solve everything. <laughs> but, well, I'll leave it to the guys who don't want spoilers. Is it okay to give away this one tidbit? No, go, go, go. I'm only really joking. Go ahead, man. I'll, I'll survive. 
I will, I will survive. So, um, may, may, may I mention it or? Um... Yeah, go ahead, go ahead first, James. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, is that um, okay? This has the same validity of something that it was said by a friend of a friend of a friend of the guy who is the cousin of the aunt of the niece of the <laughs> uncle of the person who cleans the floors at Hasbro. <laughs> so that is the validity that it has. So um, take it, take it as as you will. But there was a rumor going on about a plot involving the Cutie Mark Crusaders going to Manhattan. It was going to last for two episodes, and it will involve the CMC is going to visit Babs to see the uh, the division of the Cutie Mark Crusaders uh, club in Manhattan and discovering that Babs has her uh, has earned her Cutie Mark. Mm. And ah. then the three of them will be stuck in Manhattan with no way to go back to Ponyville, but to take jobs in order to make enough money to get out of the town. And in the process of those jobs, they will discover their special talents. Like, I don't know, Scootaloo will be uh, dancing or fixing things or something like that. And an Apple Room will be doing something else. And Sweetable will be singing or doing magic tricks or things like that. And in the process of getting the money, they will also get their cutie marks. So they will go back to Ponyville with uh, their cutie marks earned. Mm, okay. That's, that's, I heard that like two years ago. I don't know if they are actually going to use that. But James, it sounds you... like a good, yeah. it sounds like a good idea. But like I said, I, I heard I, it from I, a friend of a friend of the cousin of the uncle. It doesn't have uh, much validity. But didn't, so like... what does that make us? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but didn't someone from the show say that there will be no babs I don't know. I, I don't remember. Like, is it in, that, in the wake of the? Sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, like isn't it? Is it that it, in season four, or season five, there will be no Babs? I don't remember that. Mm-hmm. Well, there was no Babs in season four. Oh, that could be. All right, all right. I just uh, in the wake of the latest comic book, I've learned not to rely on the citation of or but but this official said this mm. because. Well, okay, just because these guys say it doesn't make mean it actually happens. I seem to recall there would be no Flash Sentry in Season 4, but he actually had a speaking role. <laughs> and the fans doth rage. Uh, uh, Flash, you can't get a break. For you. Uh, but, uh, James. And, uh, and the guy is completely harmless. Mm. What the hell is wrong with hating Flash Sentry this much? Oh. It's it, it, We are flanderizing ourselves with our hatred towards Flash Sentry. Uh, Self-loathing in a way. It's like an OC. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho... He uh, was made for Twilight. James, what about you? What about your um, op- um, expectations for Season 5? Oh, what do I want to see in Season 5? Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Oh, I already said it. Simple enough. I want ponies in it. <laughs> um, but I, I, I want to mention in my uh, turn of word, I want to bring up what uh, what Kin was saying before about hype. Like going in there with no hype whatsoever. That's good to a certain point. Mm. If you don't hype yourself enough, you can end up not giving up. Too much of a crap about what you're going to watch. Oh, oh no, trust me. I like, wake up in the morning like clapping my knuckles together like who's in, in excitement. I just don't know anything about it yet. Who's this? Like, I'm not even pony. joking. <laughs> I literally, it sounds like this. Just that's what, I, that's what I do. I I did that since I was a kid. Like when I'm excited, I like I'm like you know when you like clench your fists together and shake your arms like that. It got to the point where my knuckles were touching, and it and then I did it once in a stream, and someone went, "Are you clapping your knuckles?" Clapping your knuckles together went, "Oh my god, I am." <laughs> I I've am been doing I this am, for years. I'm more of a clapping my hands together in happiness. Happy, happy, <laughs> joy, joy. <laughs> I, I do the double clap and then I close my fists like, <laughs> like that. But yeah, no, it's like, um, yeah, okay, that may work for you, but some people, they, they say, oh no, I'm going to stay away from it. I'm going to go do something else, watch something. I'm not going to hype for it at all. You can uh, run the risk of not caring for it when it when it then releases, yeah. but yeah, you then it, risk of, oh well, I didn't care about it till now. Why yeah. bother? Yeah, yeah but guess. but if you hype yourself too much, you run the risk of getting disappointed because it's like, oh my god, it's coming out, it's coming out, it's coming out, it's gonna be crazy. Oh, what are they doing? That Indo is not supposed to be real. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you end up you end up like whoosh, getting slapped in the face. Yeah, because... you can never. No, if you raise your expectation too high, 
you can never have those expectations met. Uh, let's, for, let's, for an example from the show or the movie is, spoiler to anyone who hasn't watched Rainbow Rocks yet, but it's been out for a while, Octavia has a speaking role in it. She does. Yeah. And a lot of people complained that, and I, I, I didn't complain, but I agree that it wasn't how I pictured her voice. Yeah, but what were you expecting? But that's well, the voice she's got. Dude, that's what she's got. For now. For, for now. now. For now. Well, yes. she, she also talked in the comics. She did have a, <laughs> yes, a, a couple didn't... of lines. She didn't have a, she didn't have a voice, but I completely understand people who were disappointed because in my own, uh, the way that I saw it in my own head canon, I actually, I wrote a fanfic about this. Octavia is a mute. Oh my! Yeah, Octavia doesn't 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 speak. So, and it's it's one of the first fanfics that uh, appeared in the fandom. I wrote it in like 2011. Got featured yeah. in in EQD. Is it still in film fiction? Uh, hell, I think it's still on Equestria Daily even. And the fact that they they gave her a voice, I was like, sure, that's completely fine, no problem. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it all depends on how you react and how so. I know it's, it's socially acceptable. It is. If you flip your, if you flip your manure okay. and you start getting mad because they changed something in an animated show, you really need to change your priorities. Like I know this is pop culture, this is important for you, but dude, sometimes, you know, th- there are things that are worth getting mad about, and then there are things that some people get mad about that they are not really worth it. True, 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 true. And... But back to what I but back to what I was saying about hype is that uh, there is a third level of hype that I don't know if it happens to everyone, but it has happened to me. It happened to me twice last year. No, actually, it happened to me in 2013 and in 2014 uh, when the San Diego Comic Con animatics for season four premiered. Uh, they came out and they had that shot of the Power Ponies episode. Mm-hmm. I went nuts <laughs> because I was like, I wanted a superhero episode in this show and I had no idea how they were going to pull it off. And the way they pulled it off was fantastic. Fantastic. But it's fantastic because I saw that clip, I saw the previews, and I hyped myself so much that I went into it completely blind. I was blinded by the hype. I went into, into what I, from now on, I like to call it Power Ponies mode. Where it's like, it doesn't matter if it's going to suck, because for me, it's not going to suck, and for me, it's going to be awesome. And it happened to me again in 2014 with Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, yeah, that's an awesome one. I actually went in that... It, I did the opposite of the hype. I saw the trailer for that and went, that is going to be some doo-doo. That's going to that's gonna come out horribly. That's, a, that's an Avengers imitation that's going to come know, out horribly. Watched it. One of my favorite films of uh, 2014. Yeah, you know, is that I, it's not the favorite. I went in. I I went into that. I, I saw the trailer. I was very hyped for it. But then the second trailer came out, and they said that Bradley Cooper was the voice of Rocket, and I was like, "There you go. That's it. I don't need anything else. This movie is going to be the best because Bradley Cooper is in it, and he, he's one of my favorite actors. So it's like, yeah. Again, blinded. H- hype can blind you. And it's kind of like a defense mechanism because you don't want to be disappointed by the thing you are a fan of. Oh, true, true, true. So you start singing, blinded by the hype. <laughs> uh, I, I, I kind of, kind of did really. I don't know. It couldn't see the episode due to blinded from. The <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's uh, but this thing is happening to me with season five as well because they announced episode one hundred, and. I read what's going on with episode 100, and I am not going to say anything. I don't know what's going on with that. Wait, I read episode 100. Episode 100 is going to be... There's 26? I think it's 6 or 7. 6 or 7 episode of uh, season season Uh, 5. I will ask ask if anyone knows. Does anyone know if this is going to be a season 3? No, no, this is going to be a 26 episode. 26 episodes. Yes! Now I'm really excited. 26, 52... And 13, uh, 65, 65, and wow, it's not that far away, actually. Wow. But yeah, the, I read one, what they want to put in that episode. One aspect of it was the one thing that I wanted to see in that episode. That, that's coming from, uh, Megan and, and Gene Miller. And it's like, if they're making episode 100 about that, or including that, 
I am. I, you're not going to see me. I'm going to <laughs> go into another galaxy because I just exploded. <laughs> you, so, and, you and me both, James, because I think I know what's going on with that one. Just, just so you know, you guys understand, the one thing that I am talking about is on the same level of amazingness as having weird old Jankovic voice a character in the show. <laughs> uh, mm. but, but anywho, gents, we have been talking about this for a while now, and uh, I think we oh, wow. take a leaf. Do, to... you want, Sorry? do you want to stop here? Uh, does anybody else want to say anything regarding Season 5 or Princess Twilight? Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. really looking forward to it. <laughs> That's about it. True that. Looking <laughs> forward, but with, but with the cautionary word taken from Equestria Games. <laughs> uh Enjoy the show you're watching, not the one you envision. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That, yes. That's oh my god! Been... We need one of these days. We have to discuss the episode of Equestria Games and the way some of the uh, brony analysts re uh, reacted to that one episode. Well, we'll just have to find another time and a date for Civil to come on again. That was that was the one episode where I wish I had a long distance uh, a slapping program <laughs> so I could go after one after the other. <laughs> Because that's not how you react with the. You are judging the show that you want to watch, not the one that you are watching. I, uh, I've, I've been asked by a few friends um, if I should do a react. You know those reaction videos? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I was told I should do that, like just for jokes, um, when I'm watching it for the first time altogether. Because I've I've seen some of those reaction videos, and you can clearly tell they've seen the episode before. Yeah, it so. feels scripted. <laughs> yeah, so I'm I'm thinking of doing it, but actually, what like watching the show for real when it first? Yeah, when it live streams it and everything, uh, for for real, it will be a genuine reaction. So you'll probably see me squeeing a lot, <laughs> uh, jumping out my chair, going yes, you know, pretty exciting. Think we should but... do that. We should do that. If if anyone yeah. else is interested, we should plan it out. Uh, I'd, I'd rather James and Silver Quill not be there because I don't want them to see me being an idiot. In fact, they can't watch the videos. They're not allowed to watch the videos. Now I really want to see it. <laughs> yeah, why? why? Uh, you guys get to see me be an idiot like every video. I know, but super, I, I love that. And it always changes my day up. But, you know. no, Silver, you say that you're an idiot, but so, you're, you're smart enough to not come across as an idiot. So. <laughs> yeah. I, I'll sh I shall have to work harder then. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. No, no, don't do that. Uh, Don't do that. The producer will shock you again. Oh, God, no, no. Um, <laughs> I have, I have actually watched the entirety of the series far too many times now. Sorry, I'm I glad. Could quote, I could quote it all. Oh God, no! I might just. I've been trying not to quote it all, uh, all episode. So, but but uh, anywho, let's let's move on to news time. And once again, thank you everyone for coming on and discussing. And putting up this topic for discussion about Twilight and what we'd like to see for Season 5, because I personally love this kind of discussions where we could just talk about things that are, well, not usual for us to talk about. Like, I would really like to talk about Luna next time. <laughs> or maybe Spike, who, who knows? Maybe we could get um Dr. Wolf on and he can join us in a banter of talking, talking about these kind of things. Who knows? If there's a demand, we'll probably pr try and provide it. Yay. Yay. Yeah. I like that idea, actually. Yay. Gathering a good amount of people to discuss uh, something as simple as that. Yeah. True, 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 true. But anywho, let's move on to news time. And uh, King, you think you can handle this? I can try it. Right. Well, we've already discussed uh, Season 5 of, uh, of uh, My Little Pony, as you've been listening. Uh, but it airs on the 4th of April, which is not far, far away, is it, really? Mm -hmm. uh, mark the date in your calendars, because Friendship is Magic has officially returns on the 4th of April, meaning that mysterious date on the IMDB was correct all along. Who would have thought it? Can you handle the anticipation? This hiatus has left you pining for more in the desert of pony less lessness lessness pony lessness uh, pony lessness pony lessness pony lessness <laughs> so many s's we finally get our cartoon equine back after almost a full year wow it's already been a year yeah, yeah. wow that doesn't feel that long uh, a uh, piece of it does <laughs> 
For a moment, Maybe I thought because this for a is moment my first th- hiatus. For a moment, I thought we were going to have Half Life Three <laughs> released before season five. <laughs> Oh god. I'm afraid I'm on I'm on the opposite spectrum. I was like, oh, it's starting up in just a month. There were other videos I need to get done. <laughs> yeah. Let's work faster. <laughs> but I can't. Render, I rendering videos takes way more time than uh basically anything else. Yeah. This, and I blame the software for that. <laughs> I uh I this is my first hiatus. I actually became I actually discovered the show which we covered a, a previous episode. Um I've shotgunned the entire series, season one through three. Oh, wow. In a week and a half. Yeah, I watched it all in a straight queue uh, after work every day. And then I went, oh, on to the next season. Oh, there's no season. Hmm. Wait, no, there is a season four. (laughs) It's being live streamed. Oh, cool. It gets live streamed tomorrow. Cool. So I literally (laughs) caught up to season one, uh, season four, episode one, the day it came out, basically. Nice. And... This is my first actual hiatus, and I've got to say, I, I think I survived it pretty well. I just made content. <laughs> That's how, it, how I survived. Awesome. How did you survive? I, with my sanity intact. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, it. oh, you have you have oh that's news. You have sanity. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> well, I was trying for a cuckoo clock sound effect there, but apparently my, it failed me. Oh God, no! Or, oh. or I'm hearing cuckoo clocks in my head. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know. Anything I hear in my head. Anything I hear in my head is the voices. <laughs> I kept on updating movies late, which actually having an Ask Pony blog, uh, especially a review Ask Pony blog, kind of keeps you busy, busy, busy. Also, commissions going to conventions too. I went last year. Holy cow! I'm, I'm nuts. And uh, well, two news of nobody. And yes, watching a lot of movies, having another having another hobby actually helps. Uh, to ease the weight of the hiatus between between seasons of your favorite show. So, yeah. And as for me, well, went to conventions, learned how to play Magic the Gathering, found love, lost love. Uh, it's, it's one of those things, like, say la vie, it's life. And Pony is just another form of entertainment for me. Like, I do enjoy it a lot, and I do have the podcast to edit and do stuff. So, yay! So, uh, keeping myself busy, 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 busy. Uh, well, we've got to keep yourself busy somewhere, somewhere, haven't you? I mean, I, I don't think I could cope with just sitting there going, "When's the next one start?" In a year, <laughs> I'll go crazy. <laughs> I couldn't do that. But anywho. Uh, before we all go nuts about anticipation of season five, King, the next one, please. Well, Weird Al autographs in the new MLP trading cards. Plus, the full checklist has been revealed. The full checklist of all the cards in My Little Pony Series 3 has been revealed. That means that all ten of the autograph cards are now known. They can include none other than Weird Al y- Yankovic, Yankovic? Yankovic. Mm-hmm. himself, not to mention John claude Van Damme's Discord and the entire main six. First appearances uh, of Ingrid Nielsen. Did you uh, say Jean claude Van Damme? <laughs> I did, yes. Uh, you appeared to be reading the wrong bit. That would be a great, that would be great. John claude Dis- Van Damme. Discord. W- Discord. He'll roundhouse kick the elements of harmony. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see that. Oh, right. no, did uh, you have to admit uh, Jean Claude Van Damme, Van Damme as Discord and Nicolas Cage as Tyrek? <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving this in. <laughs> this this summer, Jean Claude Van Damme as Discord. <sighs> uh, but still, well, that, that would explain why you... Christ alive. I need to get this right. <laughs> uh, this is why we need roll and not some <laughs> idiot. Hey, you're not an idiot. You, you're doing it fine. You're doing it fine. But hey, yeah, I'm doing it fine. What you were doing? Fine. What are you going to say, Silver? I was just going to say if uh, if uh, Nicholas Cage is playing Tyrek, that explains why he killed the bees. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the bees! Not the bees. Oh, not the bees. Oh, not the bees. Not the bees. With with special guest star Sarah Jessica Parker as Princess <laughs> Celestia. Yeah. Oh God! Uh, <laughs> I hope this doesn't get in. That's so bad. <laughs> Uh, oh, but yeah, gosh. but yeah, th- those three. Th- remember back when James and we were talking about this, and the cards were autographed and whatnot. Ah, uh, well, because I'm not that big on the on the trading cards. I have like a ch- like a one of those rarity metal boxes mm-hmm. full of cards, and 
I have no idea what to do with them. I didn't even bother making a making a deck because I have no idea how to play that game. Oh, it's a difficult game to play, but I I play I played Yu-Gi-Oh, I played Magic the Gathering, and I can't understand those. I I played Pokemon. Pokemon is pretty straightforward, but I cannot understand how you played My Little Pony Car Game. It's hard. It, 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 it is. You collect them, and if you see a kid with them, you beat that kid down and get more cards. <laughs> wow, way more interactive than I expected. Well, you see. You get all these characters, and you try to ship them with Twilight. <laughs> oh, wait, sorry. That's uh, That's... Twilight's secret ship folder. Oh, I want to play that game. <laughs> no, but... Um... That, seems, that seems like the Cards Against Humanity version of My Little Pony. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but remember back... got to collect all the cards you can or just to survive. Hmm. Survival of the fittest. <laughs> remember back when James and we were talking about um, the artists autographing the cards? And if you take a look see at the picture here on EQD, those cards are individually autographed yeah one by one they are uh they have been autographed and the, there's autograph from tabitha st germain ingrid nielsen yeah which Kip- by the way the, the tabitha st germain card yeah. uh, not only has rarity and luna in there mm-hmm. there is also a derpy in the window there's a derpy in the window there's a derpy that, that's cool because those of you who remember the very first version of uh, the last roundup uh, had Derpy in it and it was voiced by Tabitha. Was it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, Tabitha, Tabitha voiced Derpy and when people complain about the voice of the character, they revoiced it and somebody else did the voice uh, for Derpy. So, yeah, the original voice actor for... for when does Derpy talk? Uh, other, she, than, other than, uh, well, I don't know what went wrong. Yeah, episode went. 4. It, that's the one that episode 14 of season 2 that's uh, the last roundup she talks in the very first <laughs> minutes of the episode right after uh, the, yeah. the, the title sequence oh god I remember the episode so well it broke the stream dude <laughs> the best part of that episode uh, two minutes two seconds of silence in the entire chat when Derpy, <laughs> when Derpy appears and then the chat explodes <laughs> And then he broke. Everyone's in stunned silence. Uh, oh God. But yeah, these cards, they are uh, they are individually signed, each and every one of them, which is very remarkable, actually. True, true. Uh, Cap- characters Ca- involved, Discord, the main Kathleen, Kathleen Barr with Trixie and Chris Alice in there. I'm still amazed that she's she voices both characters. Mm-hmm. Mm. And also Tara Strong. John Delancey. Yeah, we're all uh, like, oh, John God. Van Damme. <laughs> Peter New. Peter New with Yup. Oh wow! This like oh man! This is the collector's dream. Like, this is yeah. the kind of thing that Japanese trading card players get, but they're not really signed officially. They're just stamped on. So yeah, this this is a dream come true for us. We were talking about Lee Toker at the beginning of the podcast. I am missing one with the Snips and Stephen Magnet in there. Yeah, maybe in series four because who knows uh, if this carries on or this gets traction they'll they'll probably do more and you know what I, i'm tempted to buy a box of this like just hope to get one of the autographs like uh celestia or luna would be nice and Weirel or john delancey would be perfect or terra strong like uh, uh sorry geeking out cards cardboard crack in any other shape or form i understand i used to be a Yu-Gi-Oh fan okay that's like used I, to I, I just cleared out my Yu-Gi-Oh collection not long ago. I'm like, I don't want to start another. <laughs> Dude, the, surest, I... the surest way to keep kids off drugs is to get them invested in a card game. They'll have no yeah. money to spend. Oh, it's... I actually, I have to remember when that first came out um, as a kid, uh, trying to get cards. It was actually it actually came out on the news at one point where you couldn't get any cards. They were sold out. Every like they'd sell them in petrol stations or gas stations for you Americans, um, gas stations, petrol stations, uh, toy stores, the comic stores, everywhere you'd go in. You said, "Can I have some Yu-Gi-Oh cards, please?" And they go, "Sorry, sold out." And there were no way you'd have to travel for absolute age just to find a pack. Wow. So you know you'd go to school and they'd say, "Hey guys, I got a new pack." Everyone's like, "Oh cool, let's open it together." <laughs> and that you know, opening a card of a pack of five cards was the highlight of oh, the nerd section of the courtyard. Uh, okay, let me. I'm going to tangent onto something else. What Silver said before about keep kids on magic so they don't won't do drugs. Um, in there's a new set that's coming out for Magic the Gathering called Dragons of Takir, and spoilers are out and whatnot. And there's a Plainwalker card. Uh, the new Narset or something like that and 
a booster pack is about what? Um, four bucks for you guys? Is it silver? Something like that? So I I stopped paying attention to the prices. I just say take my blood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, a it's it's like three euros and a half, four euros yeah, for that, for me here. Let's in just Spain. say two fifty dollars. And the card that I'm talking about, not even out yet, is estimated to be about fifty bucks. Wow. Yeah. So the, you know, I frown I I frown upon card prices because it's like. It's a piece of cardboard. It's a piece of paper. How can you put price on that? But you, like, a, there are there are paintings that go for way less than that money. Paper uh, money. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, but that's, that's what paper money is. A piece of paper with the value attached to it. True, yeah. true. That's true. But here's the thing, James, like uh, with Magic the Gathering and how it is right now, it's a form of well, let's just say that people who play magic can earn big bucks. So to have something like that attached to, well, a cardboard card. Yeah, who knows? Um, you play, you earn 10,000 bucks if you win a pro tour, and you <laughs> keep rolling on. Really? Uh, let me, oh, my um, God. Was it 10,000 or was it 150,000? I don't remember. I don't know, but if they're making more money than I make in a year, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but here's the thing, King. You're competing with other really good players so there's the caveat there and you need to get first second and third to win the cash and against multiple hundred of people good luck and rent Still. over rent over like I, I just needed to put it up there sorry about that but so super oh, it's that much money <laughs> card games yep card games on motorcycles are the way forward uh, <sighs> Let's wait until they make an animated series of Magic the Gathering, then oh, we will see what oh, happens. I want to see, I want to see an animated version of people playing card games, but the card games is My Little Pony cards. I want <laughs> to see that so hard right now. Uh, but, uh, Silver, you haven't been talking much, so what do you think, man? Well, I gotta be honest, I don't, uh, I don't know the card games that well. It makes more sense that an autograph, uh, the question of, cards are just cardboard why would you pay so much money for it it's the ink that's on the cardboard that you're paying for it's true. the it's the concept of scarcity true true which in a digital age seems almost absurd well for this one it's not technically a game but it's more of a trading card like baseball cards and whatnot so yeah. this is kind of cool because i don't mind buying this because you're buying those cards for the art even though some are rare some are not so rare. You, you know, you know, Norman. I will understand if you buy something regarding Magic: The Gathering for the art. I will buy a print uh, of the artwork. Like uh, if they release, uh, for example, you know this this one character, Ink Eyes. Ink Eyes, yeah. This, yeah, yeah, yeah. The the the, the this rat like kind of character. I have a play mat um, of uh, of Ink Eyes, and it's really cool. It's probably one of my favorite type of characters in Magic: The Gathering. If they start releasing prints uh, featuring ink eyes, I'll totally get some. But I am not going to pay fifty dollars or whatever amount of money for a card just because it has ink eyes in it. You know, you know what I mean. Yeah, I know. I understand. I understand. It's one of those situations where is it worth it for you or not? Actually, the funny thing is, from my days in the Yu-Gi-Oh, sometimes it's cheaper to shell to fifty dollars to buy the card you want <laughs> yeah, than yeah, to pay yeah. sixty or seventy for packs. Of cards you don't want. Oh, true, true. I I do understand There's... buying singles versus buying a pack and getting it. I will never forget the first day I got my first, uh, not booster pack. You know when you get like little packs of five cards. Yeah. I will never forget opening up my first pack. Going, my friends say, go and buy this. Go on. I know it's hard to find, but get it. It's worth it. I said, oh, how is it worth it? You only get five cards. I'd rather go and get forty cards and maybe get a really cool card. <laughs> I will never forget opening up a pack and getting two blue eyes in one pack. <laughs> oh god, that's oh. <laughs> that was the best. It was like, what card one? Monster Reborn. Card two, Swords Revealing Light. Card three was some like basically a sacrifice card, like two hundred attack, twenty defense, or something like that. And then the two oh, blue eyes, white dragons. <laughs> wow, and it was like. Blue eyes, white dragon. Wow. <laughs> Another blue. <gasps> Please, sir. It was like the best day ever. <laughs> yeah, it was just the best thing ever. And I, of course, I was like 10 at the time. <laughs> it's still like getting two blue eyes in a pack. That's rare. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah. But yeah, now uh, I feel old. Yeah, I feel old. Too. Well, 
I feel young. Cause... <laughs> uh, Screw you, oh, Keen. Well, let's beat him up, man. Oh, it's, it's, you have no idea how rare it is for me to be the youngest in the group. You have no idea. Remember that... You go to hell. Depressing. You go to hell, you die. <laughs> Remember that joke we go mentioned in the very beginning? Full Brony Center of Bar Tree came out. Guess who's the one? <laughs> <laughs> the one that stayed behind to still drink. <laughs> no. But anywho, but anywho. The young one that probably drinks the most. <laughs> Uh, but anywho, um, with that, news time's over, and once again, uh, we we should really find a good segue for this, because I'm really terrible at this. But anywho, uh, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. and if you'd like to email us personally, well, links are in the show notes. I would like to say a big thank you to you guys for coming on, and just being here to chat it up with me on this Saturday afternoon and Saturday morning, and... Sunday night for me, um, early nah, morning. that's fine, Norm. That that's fine, Norman. We don't have anything better to do anyway. So, <laughs> oh, trust me, I get to to meet with someone I look up to for drawing, i.e., James, and I get to look up, uh, get to meet Silverquill of all. You know, that was that was this. Hi guys, oh, we're joining the call. Hello, James. Hello, Norman. Hello, <laughs> hello, Silver. <laughs> Hi, hi there. Wow, that's a uh, that was a surprise. And of course, hello. Norman, as always, it's an hello. <laughs> uh, and as always, Norman, it's an absolute <laughs> pleasure to be on a podcast with you because, you know, the laughs, <laughs> yeah, the giggles, true. the funsies. Yeah, that's true, man. Like, having you on here is always exciting. I, I, I never know what's going to happen next. <laughs> yeah, we might meet John Claude Van Damme or who knows else. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. true. John Claude Van Damme is Star Swirl the Bearded. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, who plays, um, no, Discord is Jean Claude Van Damme. Uh, Shining Armor is who plays um, Born Reeves. in the Born Identity. Oh, uh, Matt Damon. Oh my God, You're Matt Damon. <laughs> yeah, Matt Damon. Uh, Shining Armor is Matt, da- Matt, uh, Matt Damon. Is Shining Armor and uh, Queen Chrysalis as who's that? Queen Latifah. Uh, Dying of the Day. No, Dying of the Day. The main female villain. Oh, what was her name? Are you talking about Rosamund Pike? I think so. Of you, Mrs. Frost? No. No? I'd have to Just, look it up, but yeah. Die, die, die Another Day is the one where James Bond is uh, imprisoned in North Korea for a year and a half. And then there is this Ice Palace and Halle Berry is in there as well. What? Uh, Halle Berry is like the Bond girl. She's, the, she's with the good guys. And then Rosamund Pike is one of the bad guys. <laughs> no, I'm thinking of the villain that uh, when Bond is captured at the pier... She has the, uh, like a, she twists it and it slowly starts. Oh, you're talking about, yeah, yeah, you're talking about. I can't remember about, her name though. Okay, you're talking about the world is not enough. That's, that's Sophie, the one. That, I think it, that's Sophie Marceau, but I'm not entirely sure. Let well, me yeah, that, that is crazy. Now it's bothering me. <laughs> I'm going to look it up. Uh, We've started him up. Yeah, true, uh, that's true. Right. Yeah. So, but anywho, um, Silver, any thank you you want to give out to, man? Well, I want to thank you guys for a fun, wow. fun discussion and just uh, for everyone for listening in and all the people who've been, uh, who've been doting attention as we go through this long stretch between, uh, seasons. Yeah. So looking forward to season five yeah. with our sanity intact. There we go. <laughs> I was yes. expecting that. Anyone who survived, oh, yeah. I will. I'm good. It was Sophie Marceau. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think we should, uh, anyone who survived the hiatus should get a shirt with all the main six high five and going, we survived the hiatus! You Actually, know, there are a... shirts that yeah. say that. <laughs> oh, there are? Yes. I want that shirt. <laughs> there are there's, there's two versions. There is, I survived the hiatus and I did not survive the hiatus. <laughs> I want to buy one of, I did not survive the hiatus. <laughs> I want, yeah, I want that and I want to be buried in it. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, but anywho, um, King, any thank yous you want to give out? To the people that have started watching me on DeviantArt and Twit- Tw- uh, Twitter, on uh, Tumblr, everywhere. Um, to the people who've started watching my speed paints and Let's Plays. And to coming here on the NBS show and watching. Uh, thank you all for listening to me, James, Norman and Quill all rant about whatever. <laughs> Yes, whatever indeed. We survived the hiatus. You have yet to survive the podcast. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway, James, thank you. I I want to thank the Academy for <laughs> this honor of being here now. Um, I 
I think without any of your guys support I wouldn't be here right now and that goes from everyone in this uh, recording right now like uh, Silver, Norman, Kin to all those who are not uh, uh, here now like uh, Sketchy, Beth, Mecca, Hazel, Ray, uh, my awesome supporters on my streams like uh, Karon, Eve, Mythos, you guys are awesome and yeah I think that's it, you guys are great awesome, if it awesome. wasn't for you I wouldn't be here right now True. No more, James. Next con, I see you out and buy more of your stuff. <laughs> I have the frames ready. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> uh, I'll be ready to to get more prints in in the works. Awesome, awesome. Right. As for me, I'd like to thank you guys. Thank you so much for coming on and well, like I said, spending the Sunday with no, it's the Saturday with me. Like, thank you for coming on and just hanging out. That does that that really helps me a lot in some shape or form. Thank you. And also to the listeners who are listening to this, like thank you for listening in because without you, um, this show won't be where it is because um, I would be talking alone. In well, Silver, do you have an extra set uh, padded cell? Oh, <laughs> I'm talking a, alone. What do you usually got, do when we're not streaming? <laughs> I've got one with a view of the moat. It's quite nice. Yay! I want to be in that one. <laughs> But anywho, um, you can also catch us um, on Twitter. I can, see, I can see Twilight's Castle from here. <laughs> oh my god. Um, the, show's, uh, the show's Twitter account is at MBS Show. The Sweetie Board will probably scold me because this recording has gone on for two, hour, two hours. Mm, sorry, Ooh. sorry, Sweetie. And also, you can reach me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles by fancy. And what about you, James? Where can they reach you, man? Uh, go to my askmovieslater.tumblr.com uh, blog. It's it's guaranteed that that it's going to update every week, so you're gonna have something to look forward to every Thursday. Awesome, awesome, awesome! And Silver, where can the audience find you? Just look behind you. Oh, <gasps> God. Yay! I mean, ah, I mean, yay! Take, I mean, take me, Quill. Take me now. Conflicted feelings. Uh, <laughs> Oh, oh my. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> uh, uh, in reality, uh, you could find me on YouTube under, uh, well, if you do a search for Silver Quill, it'll I'll likely pop up. Uh, and MLP Silver Quill, lots of hyphens, dot deviantart dot com, where you can find my comics and uh, title cards directing you to my videos. Awesome. Subscribe to both. <laughs> Head of the curve. <laughs> Yay. And King, where can they find you? Uh, same as always. Uh, I'm, I'm across all forms of platforms. It's Kickass King on DeviantArt, Tumblr, uh, on YouTube and Steam, Kickass King One, and on Picato, it's just Kickass King. Uh, watch me stream, come and chat, have a one-on-one. Same as always. Uh, and maybe hopefully. Back on the NBS show if I don't mess up again. <laughs> it's cool, man. We're not perfect. We're not perfect. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyvilleLive.com. Links will be provided in the show notes. So, anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been very confused. I have been Silver Quill and continue to be... I have been, and always will be, Kick-Ass King. Yay, and we'll see you next week with more bantering about pony princesses and John Floyd Van Damme being Discord and other things <laughs> that are available. <laughs> we'll I'm you. not going to live that down, ever. <laughs> nope. We'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye-bye.